Hello, beautiful people! Kumusta? Mabuhay! Magandang gabi and maligayang pagbabalik sa akin channel. Ako po si Ovela. I am your host, Ovela. And today, we will be reacting to the latest interview of Bongbong Marcos. You guys told me that it was mostly in English, so I was like, let's do it! Um, let me read you the title. In private presidential interviews Bong Bong Marcos with CNN Philippines there you have it it is a long video so if you can grab something to munch on something to drink you'll be the only one who can do it because I can't I am observing Ramadan so I won't be able to drink or eat but I will do my best to focus as much as possible as much as I can there you go. I'm actually excited to react to this just to see if they're gonna ask him different questions from all the other interviews that I reacted to and how he will be able to answer them. Yes. And also, I've seen that uh, his son interviewed him in a video that was uploaded, I think, on his own YouTube channel. And if I'm not too tired and, and I have time, I may react to it on Friday so that I can release it for you guys for the weekend uh, on Saturday. There you go. Before we continue on, as usual, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Music Game News because that is where you can DM me your suggestions and that's where uh, the chances are higher for me to see your messages. Thank you so much and without further ado, let's get to it. Let's go. Just I'm ready. Just before the Filipino votes in a hotly Ruth contested Kaba. presidential elections, we speak to candidate Bongbong Marcos in private. Thank you very much for granting us this in And I still don't understand, okay? I, I, I tried to up the, uh, the quality of the video, but it's just in 720. This is CNN Philippines. How is it just in 720? I don't get it. It's so frustrating, man interview Senator Bong Bong Marcos. Thank you for having me. Maraming salamat. Nako counting the days to the election, sir. Yes. Kamusta na po kayo ngayon? Well, uh, malaking ano nawala yung pagod namin after the uh, after the Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so, now we're back uh, doing rallies and going out. Mm -hmm. Although, syempre, okay, they took a break. Papunta na tayo doon sa organization. Uh, the 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 people on the ground uh, to make sure everybody knows what to do, uh, vote protection essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but uh, again, to 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 solidify, because uh, essentially the surveys are very encouraging. Pero numero palang yan eh. Kailangan pang gawin boto yan. Tapos kailangan bantayin yung boto niya. And of course, as usual, if I miss anything that, anything important that uh, he or she says in uh, Tagalog, please do let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much. So, that's what, that's really what we are doing now. Although we won't stop. I, 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 I yeah, people tell me to take a day off. I cannot. Eh. Dahil ang training ko, ganyan eh. Basta you cannot take a day off. Okay. Uh, so that's what, uh, until the very last day that we can campaign, we will campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, sir, much of who you are today has been largely shaped by your past. You were eight years old when you and your family moved into Malacanang. Can you tell us uh, what did you like about living in the presidential palace and were there any downsides? Seven years old. I uh, spent my eighth old. birthday mm -hmm. in the yeah. palace already. I remember mm. um, my father... Uh, was newly elected president because my birthday is in September. At that time, po mapasok ang presidente in Enero. So, um, he took me to school. Uh, that was the last time that ever happened. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, seventh, uh, it was my seventh birthday. But, uh, seventh, uh, my eighth birthday was the first birthday I spent in the palace. So, what was it like? Um, in the beginning, it was really it was a much simpler parang bahay pa rin, and it was a very, mm. uh, the sisters uh, things weren't so hectic the palace is divided into the uh, the private uh, areas 
and the my office areas you must start our name study room in the offices of my father etc you're in the you're the presidential palace mm -hmm. and you always have to be uh, how do you say at the very least presentable mm -hmm. because the minute you leave your room you do not know who's going to be there i mean there've been many times that i came out of my room ang kasalubong ko presidente uh, na nag state visit na kasama ng father ko uh, so mahirap naman nakapajama kung lalabas you know? so that, that Bata pa kasi kayo eh, no? <laughs> okay so he said this in tagalog but i think what he said is that at some point he came out of his room and he saw like uh, a very uh, you know popular figure uh, i think he said presidente imagine you open the door of your room and you see a president of another country in front of you they'd be like what and you're like in your underwear or something so He's trying to make the point that, you know, when you're the son of a president and you live in the palace, you always have to look presentable as soon as you step out of your bedroom. And, uh, and, and I understand that. You're still small, but um, you get used to it. I mean, you get used to the idea that uh, the only real uh, area are the private areas. The rest, the, rest is the, the rest of the palace is an office. It yeah. was nice. What did I like about it? You're 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 a little spoiled <laughs> when you're in the palace because anything, especially as a kid, you're very well attended to. You're very well cared for. Mm. Uh, but it's a very unusual, you know. Uh, you know, when pagbata ka, akala mo yung buhay mo kahit na medyo na iba. E kala mo normal yun lahat ng tao ganon. Uh, but we soon learned very quickly because we had friends. Now we go to their homes and we go. And then nagbabiyahe na kami. Nakikita namin hindi, bang klase pala itong tinitira namin. Naka, nakatira kami sa palasyo. Siguro na pag-usapan na lang natin, sir. Kung sakali po ba manalo kayo, will that be your official residence? Or like si President mm. Duterte kasi ngayon, iba po, di ba? Yung tinitirahan niya eh, sa bahay pangarap eh. If I'm not mistaken, Duterte doesn't actually live in the palace, right? He lives in his own house, I think. I'm not sure, huh? but I think. Well, the palace is still the official residence. Mm -hmm. uh, to tell you the truth, we haven't actually thought about it uh, because ang planning, I, I always tell them, the planning horizon is until May 9. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll just have, we'll, we'll just have to... Uh, oh, I can bet, I can bet whatever you want that they will move to the palace. That's for sure. Tend to it when... when when, but we'll be, I mean, I won't live outside of the palace. Mm, yes. Mm -mm. Uh, dahil nandun yung opisina. Uh, so you don't have to, you cannot, you cannot be too far away. Okay. And all the facilities, the communications, um, nandun lahat eh. So it's your office and uh, you cannot really be very far away. You appeared in a movie as yourself in your father's what? biopic, Iginuhit ng Tadhana. Yeah. You were a child giving a speech about your dream of becoming a politician. Ilang taon po kayo nun? Tsaka, nung time na yun, naisip nyo na po ba na magpolitiko really? talaga? Really? Well, hindi, luma, hindi nawawala sa pag-isip. Pag no one would let me forget that I was my father's son. Mm -hmm. Maliit pa nga ako, sasabi, oh, Monday, mag-presidente ka. Yung mga pala, pa, 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 pabiro, pabiro. Pero you also mentioned in some interviews you wanted to be a rock star and an astronaut. Uh, that's right. Hmm. Paano yeah. kayo na, napunta talaga? Pero napunta kayo sa politika. Was there ever, oh, parang na, may track ba kayo papunta in, 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 na lang doon? Hindi ko ma-explain. Mm -hmm. uh, umiiwas ako sa politika, ha? Talaga. Uh, talagang tinutulak ako, ha? So I guess she asked him, was there ever a time that you uh, considered not becoming a politician and actually becoming an astronaut or a rock star, right? And now he's answering her in Tagalog. I wish you were in English. teenager pa ako, marami na nagsasak, ito yung gagawin mo. Sabi ko, ayoko. Ayoko, tapos na yan kasi nagawa na ng father ko yan. Tsaka... Nakita Look at him buhay with the long hair. Tsaka mahirap ko, mahirap ko, ang hirap naman ng buhay nito. Ang daming sakribisyo, ang, at saka ang bigat ng trabaho. So, so siya sabi ko, hindi ko na lang gagawin niya. And uh, in my studies, I tended towards mathematics and science. Mm. So, yun yung astronaut mm. part na yun. Mm. At the time, uh, we were uh, watching, I was watching the preparations for the moon landing. Mm. Moon landing was in 1969. Mm. Uh, so, yun ang talagang tinitignan ko. In fact, when my father had a state visit to the United States in 1968, uh, Senator Inouye, mm -hmm. uh, who was a good friend of my father, sinalubong kami sa Hawaii. And Senator Inouye asked me, what do you want to do while you're in the States? Mm -hmm. My first uh, answer immediately is, I want to visit NASA. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, dinipad ako sa mm. ano, Cape Canaveral in Florida. Florida. And they took me around and I was like, <laughs> so that was really that was my 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 interest my dream, mm -hmm. and then when I was studying already yung high school level na, uh, sabi ng <laughs> sabi nung nung isang uh, my housemaster yung pare na nagtuturo sa amin sabi you're always magulo and gulo gulo mo siguro wala kang ano you have too you much time in your hands study an instrument. Mm. So I did. Uh, and Which I'm very, very, very interested in music. Mm -hmm. Only because also in our house, because my mother is very musical, lagging my music. So it, it, it was mm. uh, something that was very close. That's true. That's absolutely true. I saw a clip of uh, Imelda Marcos and Ferdinand Marcos singing together, and it was awesome. So I'm very curious to, to know which instrument he learned to play. Also, guys, have you noticed the uh, audio quality, how bad it is? Like, I don't know what the uh, people behind the cameras and the audio did here, but they messed up completely. Not only because they can't film in, in 1080p, at least, in HD, uh, but also the audio is distorting. And this is an interview with the freaking, probably the, the next president of the Philippines. I mean, even if he doesn't win. Still, he is a candidate, a serious candidate here. Those two. And then I was exactly at that age when I went first went to him, I was 12 years old. Uh, but we're talking 1969. Mm. So rock and roll, right? You know, London pa, nasa England pa. Not in London, but in England. So I, 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 uh, yung mga nababasa ko, napupuntahan ko, napapanood ko, yung mga sikat na naging kaibigan ko, uh, so I got very, very interested in music. And Pero yun nga, sir, you ended in politics and you, would, you would always say na malaking influence ng dad nyo Pero, and your mom. Pero meron po ba kayong differences with your father or was can you remember a time that you had a disagreement? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. He's the boss. Uh, you don't disagree. Because he's always right anyway. As far as far. Well, he's always right. Let's not push it. People are not always right, okay? But uh, I do know what he means. Like, I have so much respect for my dad that there was like some type of kind of, you know, it's like respect slash fear. You know, whatever he says goes, you know? So I kind of I kinda understand what he, what he says here, what he means. For our situation, hindi naman nagkakamali yun, hindi naman magbibigay ng, ba ng bad advice mm -hmm. yun. At saka kung may inutos sa'yo, kailangan mo talagang gawin. Because mm -hmm. hindi naman niya gagawin, hindi niya ka namang utusan kung hindi, hindi importante. We will talk more about your family and also politics because the Marcos family is back in national politics and how did they do it? We will talk about that and more when we return. This is In Private on CNN Philippines. You're watching In back. Private with presidential candidate, former Senator Bongbong Marcos. Sir, as the only son and namesake of the late former President Marcos, you were exposed to a life of privilege. How did this shape the way you are today? Well, inevitably, Good question. Um, you get used. I mean, of course, we, we, there's no denying we, we were very comfortable and we were very privileged mm -hmm. as, as, as the, the president's children. Uh, but the, my parents would never let us forget mm. where they came from. Not, this is not yours. This is from the people. Mm. Everything we have, all the advantages that we have gained, any successes that we have achieved, and any comfort or privilege. Yeah, well, that's where the polemic, the, the, the polemy, polemic? I don't know the word, the word that, that I'm looking for, but yeah, that's where the problem uh, comes from. You know, a lot of uh, people who are against the, the Marcos family say that uh, it's, yeah, it's from the people, and yet you guys stole from the people. The village that we enjoy comes from the people, mm -hmm. and that's why you have to serve. And uh, so that was well balanced. It was very clear to us that we were very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hindi ito, ah, hindi, dapat talaga ganito ang buhay. Mm -hmm. Hindi, sinasabi sa amin. Pero, um, sinabi niya dapat balansehin, di ba, laging binibilin ng parents niyo, mm -hmm. yung balansehin pa rin yung buhay. I'm sure narinig niyo po that there was one speech where President Duterte said you were a spoiled brat and a weak leader. Do you want to respond to that? Please, please.
Please yeah. do. Please do. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I think it was playing politics. Um, uh, they, 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 I think the one thing, we, one of the things we have nervous laughter, baby. Learn about uh, PRRD is that he likes to keep everyone on their toes. I okay, so that's what you guys also told me in the comment section. You said he was playing politics. It was a strategy. He's always uh, making sure everybody's thinking hard about what they're doing. So I think that was one of those instances. And so from a privileged life, your family was forced out of Malacanang during the 1986 People Power Revolt. Mm -hmm. But how did you explain those events to your children naman po, as they were growing up? Well, my children, when they started, it really happens when they start to read. Mm. They can read the newspaper already. Uh, and uh, my children were, were born in the, essentially the 90s. So, andyan pa rin, meron pa rin mga anti-Marcos na galit sa father ko, galit sa amin, etc. Et 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 and it, I, I, gave them, I, I gave them the same explanation that my, that, that my, it, it, my, it wasn't my parents, but my aunts and uncles. I remember when my father was Senate President, uh, Every day, hmm. ang jario oust Marcos, oust Marcos, oust Marcos. Mm -hmm. I don't, hindi ko na naintindihan, what the, but it was a big, big issue. Kasi patakbo na siya ng presidente noon. Eh. So, oust niya. So, sabi ko, so, I asked one of my uncles, and I said, why, ba't ganyan? Ba't ano bang ginawa ng father ko, ba't galit sila? Sabi niya, hindi, ganyan talaga ang politika. Uh, because, uh, they want, Ayaw, gusto nga sila silang nakaupo dyan eh. Gusto, kaya gusto nila nang tanggalin yung tatay mo para sila na ang umupo. Uh, eh, ganyan lang talaga ang politika. Sabi niya, walang nanalo ng election by 100%. Laging may babatikus yan. I wonder how old he was when uh, they fled the country. You know, the Marcoses. Eh, yan ang buhay. Yan ang buhay. I don't remember if they mentioned, in, they mentioned it in the uh, Kingmaker documentary that I, uh, I made a video about. So that that I mean it's it's something that we understood immediately, uh, and that's the explanation that I gave my ch my children. And how about to a lot of our voters now are more than fifty percent youth talaga yung mga millennials, Gen Z. How about the issue of martial law? How would you explain it to them? Mm. Well, I think the best people who can explain it to them are the relatives who went through it. Mm -hmm. um, and we have explained it. <laughs> We've been explaining. Yeah, but unfortunately, a lot of those relatives are not here anymore. It for forty years <laughs> already, uh, and you know, uh, I explain it by saying that we have we the, the situation at the time was dire. Uh, the, the we were fighting a war on two fronts. We had the secessionist movement in the south. We have the dissident NPAs, um, CPP NPA in the in the countryside, um, and there was some, and these were people who wanted to bring down the government, and the government had to defend itself. Uh, so that was that was uh, my understand. That's always been my understanding of it, and I think it was so, because if you look at the historical record, toto naman ganon naman talaga ang nangyari. So that's why I think that. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's, what, that's how I, I, I explained that, that that was what uh, the, your Lolo had. Your Lolo, uh, he felt grandfather. He had to do that. But once in a while, and you have also mentioned this, mm. na nabi victim din po kayo ng fake news, yun sabi niyo. Yeah, but so, everybody, why is that? Okay? It's a social media, it's a social media. Everybody's a victim of fake news. So, kayo po tingin niyo, may mga ganun na rin, uh, parang fake news targeted against you. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could give you a whole list of mm -hmm. hundreds of, of, of instances with that. But Senator, kasi, uh, I just have to ask you that misinformation is also being attributed kasi naman to your supporters, to your online supporters. Even Facebook and Twitter, they took down hundreds of pages of spamming behavior kasi daw parang hindi siya organic. Or how do you say about... Hey, I do that too. I hate spammers, man. My God, as soon as I see in the comment section someone that's spamming, bomb, block, baby. But allegations that your supporters have a machinery of disinformation, and when you say find, not organic, find, it's find not true. Find me one. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Find me. Show me one. Mm -hmm. One. Just one. May mga tinanggal po ang Twitter and Facebook. That, but those are, those are their individual accounts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And besides, uh, I don't know, we, the Twitter, we, just yeah. some of these things are, you know, these are from the United States. They don't know what's going on here. So maybe they, they might be mistaken in some instances. Mm -hmm. But again, these are individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yung sinasabi ng trolls, thousands, so hanapan mo ako ng isa. Mm -hmm. Just one. Find me a troll. Uh, what you're saying is for it, us. they can't prove it and directly link it to you. Mm -hmm. They don't exist. You, you, that's why it's, you show me the place where there are hundreds of trolls sitting in front of a computer spreading fake news. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, if ever I'm, I'm malakas ang loob ko kasi alam kong hindi nangyayari yun eh. Mm. Na walang, walang trolls that, that can be directly linked to your campaign or to you? There are no trolls. We have no trolls. Okay. None. Not a single one. I have been offered a click army. Oh. I've been offered a troll. Hindi ko ginagamit yan. Because it's very simple. You know what the, the evolution of that is. You, no, if you accept that, it means that you're accepting to play dirty, you know, during the... The, this run to, uh, for presidency is because um, when I started doing the vlogs, which is about we're now up to our 210th, mm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, when we started doing the vlogs, I ibu boost ba natin, mm. mag-add ba tayo? Sabi ko that was smart though. See uh, the the team around. Uh, uh, BBM is smart as well, you know, I, I don't know if it was his idea or his kids idea or just people working for him to be like, dude, you need a YouTube channel, you need to promote yourself on your YouTube channel, you need to talk to your people on your YouTube channel. That was so, so smart. And I've been saying that years ago to uh, Filipino artists, you know, who didn't have YouTube channels, I was like, open your own YouTube channel. Open your own YouTube channel. Do not upload your stuff on the company company that you work for. You know, on their web on their YouTube channel. No, open your own YouTube channel. So he did that, and he gets tons of views and followers, and it's a it's a strong outlet, you know, to promote yourself. Wag 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 na, kasi hindi natin malalaman kung ano talaga yung numero. So up to now we don't boost, we don't do ads. You saw the you saw the I know Facebook zero. Oh. Yung ads, yung I amount not, spent, I, I no? don't, yeah. I, because we're all we we got used to, be, to working that way. Mm -hmm. um, and alam mo ang mga bata, the the, the, the most heavy users of uh, of social media are, are younger younger mm -hmm. people. Yep. Mm -hmm. My my son showed me two clicks. It's a troll. Mm. <laughs> two kids, that's boosted. Wala na, it's not effective anymore. Kitang kita mo naman yung mga comment, ba pare-pareho. Iba-iba kung mari, pare-pareho yung address, iba-iba yung sinasabi. O, uh, pare-pareho yung, iba-iba uh, yung address, pero pare-pareho yung sinasabi. Wala tanga lata naman eh. So, it's so moving not, uh, forward, useful. sir, would you support, kasi may bills po eh, pending bills, dinescuss na rin siya on committee level, that will penalize, uh, eto, propagators of fake news or disinformation. Mm. Kung gagawin siyang batas, sir. How do you do it? As a policy. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, 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 the greatest advantages of the internet in general, not just social media, is that it's interactive and it's, the, uh, it's open source, if that's what you want to call it. So anybody can participate. And how do you control that? Mm -hmm. And why would you want to? So you, it... I, it, it has to. It is so far self-regulating because there's really. It's really very hard for uh, a government to control it. Siguro Zuckerberg can control it, but I don't know if we. I don't know if we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I don't know if. If. If the. Even if you. you there's the, the, the. There's an action you know, that that the le, the legislation is always behind. Uh, it shows, it shows how the U.S. is always behind everything. Since, you know, Meta, right, uh, a.k.a. Facebook, is created by an American, controlled by the U.S., and most of these social media are controlled by the U.S. And since, I don't know how many of us are on these social platforms, but a lot, all over the world. So, indirectly, the U.S., 
via these social media platforms can impact the landscape of other countries, whether it be in politics or other, uh, you know, subjects, which is scary. Technology, uh, because it takes time for legis the legislators to understand what the technology really means, how it works. Uh, by which time it has moved on already, lagging behind yung, yung batas. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't know, I don't know how you will do that. I think the only, the only defense for everybody mm -hmm. is to interact and to read everything. Yeah, and Don't ask questions. Do your own research. Kaya tao echo chamber. Kayo kayo lang. Ang galing galing mo. Hindi kaling talaga. Hindi ang galing eh. Nagbubulan lang kayo. So it's it it you have to be you have to be more you have to you have to show a little discretion in 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 what you believe in. So next, let's talk about your message of unity. His aspirations for national union, former Senator Bongbong Bong Marcos, when we return. So with presidential candidate, former Senator Bongbong Bong Marcos, in private, right here on CNN Philippines. Senator, so if you want to be a father to the nation, people would be interest, interested to know how you lead your own household. Paano po ba ang buhay sa loob ng uh, bahay ng pamilya Marcos? I don't know. I, I, that's the first time I've been asked that question. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I, of course, I think it's, we all think it's normal, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure it's very it's it's different from everybody else. A little, at least a little at least a little bit. Uh, but I, we we live the generally very perfectly normal life. Mga anak ko kasi twenty seven, twenty six, twenty five. So dikit dikit sila. So uh, they're just most of most of the time most of the most of their past few years has been them studying. So kami lang dalawa nung mag, kami mag-asawa because they, the, they studied abroad. So it's a, wala, simple, simple lang naman ang buhay, buhay namin. It's, a, it's really, if you, my, with my wife especially, it's all work. Uh, she's a lawyer and mm -hmm. uh, as most lawyers do, they work very hard. Uh, so, so does she. And ako naman. But if I'm not mistaken, she hasn't practiced law in a minute, right? Uh, that's what I understood, I think, from her interview with, uh, her last interview with, when she was with her son and she was interviewed by, what's his name again? You know, the, the awesome interviewer with the glasses. Ah, forgot his name. Of course, when I was in the, when I was in the, in, in office, in govern, as governor, as, uh, Congressman, a senator, maraming trabaho. So that's all, that's really what all... Maraming trabaho. Uh, a lot of work. All you ended up doing. Disciplinarian po ba kayo? Pinapayagan niyo po ba sila ng late night? Ah, yung puro lalaki eh. No po? Uh, mm -hmm. Paano po kayo lumalabas? Yun ang swerte namin, lalaki eh. So, lumaki silang nag-iisa. Mm. Ah, look at him, the baby! He's like... <laughs> so, nasanay silang nag-iisa. So... Nung una, may curfew pa eh. Hindi talaga nasusunod. So, patras ng patras yung curfew. <laughs> so cute. So, hanggang finally, sinabi sa'yo, masabuhi lang kayo. <laughs> At saka kung uh, nagsara na, gusto nyo pang mag, ano, magpwintuhan, doon kayo sa bahay para at least alam namin na doon kayo, safe kayo. Mm -hmm. So, we're not, we're not strict that way. Um, we're strict about, about studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, ang, ang usapan ko sa mga anak ko, basta you get straight A's, you can do anything you want. Mm. Let's talk about your mom. Yes. So, uh, that was the same thing with my parents. and uh, With my parents, unfortunately, I was not the best student. I, I, I have a difficulty focusing, paying attention when, uh, when the subject doesn't interest me. I liked math. I like most of the scientific uh, classes. I loved basketball, I loved um, the arts, you know, drawing, music, obviously. But when it came to like, uh, I don't know, languages, eh, languages were okay. But when it came like to philosophy and uh, social economics and stuff like that, ugh, I could not stand it. But yeah, when something interests me, ooh, 
that's when you know I can get A's and everything. As a matter of fact, when I uh, studied uh, sound engineering, ooh, I was at the top of my class, baby. Mm. Uh, former first lady Imelda Marcos, did she have a say in your decision to run for president this time? Because that no, when you were just vice president, she had a lot to say. Yeah. Ano po yung naging uh, influence niya? And for mm. her, what does this battle? personally mean mm -hmm. put, put, it, put it this way my i even my father i don't think would would uh, object if i say she's the supreme politician in the family my father is the statesman he's the oh yes and trust me they emphasized what he just said about his mother imelda marcos in the documentary the kingmaker basically they kind of alluded to the fact that the real leader you know is not wasn't ferdinand marcos but imelda marcos Yeesh. so yeah she is at the top or she was or used to be at the top of her political game man hey i didn't see you there well now that you're here um why don't you celebrate uh for making it this far into this video by subscribing to the channel by turning on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos and of course and the most important thing to like this video because it does help out the channel tremendously and now if you don't mind i'm gonna go back to my business political genius is the all that young mother go talagang politik ayon ipulit mo eh. my mother can connect with anyone from 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 her classmate from I don't know how many years ago to the 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 person Always so fancy. in Palenque to Gaddafi to the Queen of England lahat na nagiging kaibigan niya anything that happens in politics we always ask her what do you think is this a good idea uh, uh, should we should should we do it like this or should we wait or logging and, and it's and I always almost I can say that I learn something new every time I talk to my mother especially in serious usapan na politika I always learn something new and so yes she has always a very big influence on everything hmm. as to deciding to to run for the presidency well it was uh, of course she was part of the the but it wasn't hindi ko hindi ko minating na anong gagawin natin kaya nga is just you know every so often mam ano kaya ano kaya ano sa palagay mo anong tingin mo anong basa mo sa sitwasyon ang galing niya ne ang galing niya ne alam niya at saka she knows the ang person she's yan, eh. seen it all before uh, so yes she's she she's now she's fr a little frustrated because pinagbabawalan naming sumama sa rally. <laughs> eh gustong sumama lalo na pag kay mga Tacloban, uh, yung mga yung mga sa sa Leyte, oh yun yun sabi niya kaila, you will, I can help you with your campaign anya. Sabi ko yes ma'am but you know it, it's covid pa, delikado pa. So yun medyo frustrated siya ng contact when uh, my sisters come uh, and watch a rally or watch my event sasabihin nila ano si mami tawag ng tawag kasi daw yung shirt mo hindi nakabuton o yung yung mikropono mo hindi ka marinig basta, basta marami siyang comment eh, talagang ano siya very conscious siya sa ganyan so yes uh, she's very 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 involved in everything mm -hmm. that we are doing um, but the decision was mine uh, I really have to say that the decision was mine of course I consulted everyone whose opinions I, I, I value Talking about the women in your life, Senator, anu po ba? The decision might be his. Maybe that's what he thinks, you know? But his mother probably did like Inception on him. You know the movie Inception, right? She planted the idea in his brain. So if you think about it, it's 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 her. It's it was her choice. <laughs> Role ni, uh, ng wife nyo, uh, when, if and when you become president and also your sister si Senator ah, Aimee. okay so I think she asked what will be the role of your wife and your sisters if you ever become president well I will be senator for another three years mm -hmm. uh, so I'm sure she will continue uh, doing her advocate uh, her advocacies and uh, that's uh, Imi Imi Marcos is that it the one that funded uh, 
Rodrigo Duterte's campaign, I think. Interesting, I said, and you now in the simulan, yeah. Uh, my, I was just discussing this with my wife before coming here. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, she's, she teaches, kasi, so she considers herself not only a lawyer, but she considers herself a teacher. And she says that she would like to be able to help, even in a, especially, she, ayon na ayon yan nasa public capacity. Mm. Um, she wants to be independent in, the, in a sense now. Uh, she's working privately to help the educational system somehow. As an example that I've said, when I was a governor, she, that's when she started teaching because she said it would be improper for me to practice in the province kasi alam mo na, eh, influence peddling na lang ang mangyayari dyan. So nagturo na lang siya. And uh, yung, basta there were, there were instances na nagpatulong ako sa kanya, lalo na nung pinuntahan ko yung jail namin. Sabi ko, kalahati dyan, dapat hindi nakakulong eh, wala lang abogado yan eh. Kaya, kaya nandiyan pa rin. So, so then, she, dinala niya yung estudyante niya. They gave free legal mm. advice, all of these things. Marami silang natulungan. So I'm sure it will be something in that vein. Okay. Yeah. And you have said a few times before, now when you were asked what's the worst mistake or worst uh, quality of your father, na sabi mo, he trusted the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And, pero Senator Aimee saying, ngayon pa lang daw, marami nang nag-audition eh, to be a part of your cabinet eh. So parang, Paano, ko ba, paano po ba kayo magtitiwala and what will you be your basis in choosing the members of your cabinet? Smart. Well, number one. Smart. Okay. So she said that the worst thing that Ferdinand Marcos did was uh, trusting the wrong people. So basically she's asking, asking uh, Bongo Marcos how will he go about it to not make, to, re to not repeat this, the same mistakes, the mistakes of his father. So uh, how are how are you gonna surround yourself? What are the criteria, basically? Yeah. It's competence. Uh, there's no use having hiring somebody who's incompetent. Your willingness to work for the for, to willing to sacrifice. Because look, if you, uh, the key to the next administration is going to be the economy. Mm. And the, trust. The failure and success of the next will be how we handle the economic situation. Uh, Fairness. post COVID, you know, but Honesty. we try to recover. We try to manage COVID, and how do we? And the the, the new world, COVID changed everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, the 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 managers, the economic managers, are going to be key. Mm -hmm. The best economic managers are in private are in private life. Mayayaman na yan. Laki ng kinikita ng mga yan. To have asked them to come into government and to uh, put their all their assets in, in a trust or what, well, however the, the system you're, they're going to use is interesting, and to give up that very you uh, know that very um, uh, that very how do you say Lucrative. successful yeah. mm -hmm. and and and, and uh, uh, life uh, is not an easy thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's really difficult to ask someone to basically sacrifice what they've been building and that they're successful at just to join the government and help with the government. It's really tough. But then again, if you're successful and you're set for life, you know, why not give some of your time to help your country, right? Kayo ngayon ng mga pangalan. Another thing, that's the another thing we don't allow, I don't allow mm -hmm. myself. But mm -hmm. you're right, ang daming nag-audition. Siyempre, I take, I take note of everybody. Uh, may mga recommendation yung mga, si, si ganito magaling yan, si ganito magaling yan. Um, so you just have to trust your instincts also. And generally speaking, you have to, ako, in my case, uh, I think it would, it's necessary that you have some working experience with that person. Meron na kayong ginawa. Nakita mo na talaga kung yung paano trumabaho yan, eh, masipag ba talaga yan, marunong ba talaga yan, number one. Uh, number two, uh, yung handang magsakripisyo sa gobyerno. Dahil sakripisyo naman talaga yan. You have to, Sacrifice. You have to, uh, isipin mo, ang ganda ganyan ng buhay na they go to the office, they make one million dollars one day, they go home, tapos mm -hmm. simple lang, they have a drink, they have dinner, di ba? They go out, watch a movie, simple lang ang buhay ng, ng mga private ano, businessmen. Ngayon, 
Pada di pasok sila sa ano, araw-araw, binabati ko sa araw-araw. Araw-araw. Pinagsasabi ko, sakripisyo talaga. Gusto ko lang din balikan ulit itong campaign because we're at the end game of the campaign. And at this point, President Duterte has not yet uh, officially endorsed you considering you're mm -hmm. running with her, with his daughter. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? So uh, odd. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's the president. And it's a good position for the president to stay above the fray. Um, and I, 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 I think that, uh, uh, it, I mean, of course, we would love to have him come mm. uh, and, 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 and campaign for us. And, and he said, pray, you know, pinaka, but he respects you know, his decision. Advantageous at, like, kahit papano, uh, what was the last survey satisfaction rating ng ni PRRD is, uh, what, 80%, which, is, which means people trust him. Pag sinabi ni, pag sinabi ni Pangulo, sabi niya, ito yung dapat natin iboto, maki, maraming makikinig sa kanya. Kasi may tiwala sila sa kanya, 80% nga tiwala sa kanya. So malaking, malaking tulong sana yun. But, uh, but I can see why, uh, as president, he prefer to be above it all. Um, and just make sure that, the, that, which is what he's doing now is to make sure that the conduct of elections is, uh, is accountable, is clean, is uh, transparent, etc., etc. Your, your opponents, some of them, have warned of destabilization if you become president. Do you think there's basis for that? And how will you deal with possible destabilization attempts? What does that mean? This way. Should I win? Will my supporters destabilize? So if there's going to be destabilization, it will come from them. Not from us, but nananu na yun. But namin sisirain, di ba? So that's a funny, funny uh, thing, assertion to make by, by them. Ang manggugulo yan, yung kalaban namin. So sa kanila manggagaling, kung sa kali Do you see that happening? And, mm -hmm. I don't think no. so. No? I really don't think so. It's, uh, syempre, alam mo. So destabilization means uh, if he ever wins, the other candidates might try to oppose his... Uh, Oppose him as the president? Is that what they mean? At this stage of the election, uh, at this stage of the campaign, and dami ng chismis. Si ganito, chismis? Magalo yung mga sundalo dito, o yung ganito grupo, ganito may ginagawa. So it becomes, simply, it becomes yung chismis talaga, yung umiinit ng umiinit. Kasama na rin yan yung pampagulo na you know yun fake news. The central message of your campaign is unity, but sir, the Marcos name is uh, still very polarizing until now. No? Uh, what makes you think and believe that you will be the champion for unification? I'm not the champion for unification. I'm just saying that unification and the uh, unity mm -hmm. is, ne is a necessary condition mm -hmm. for us to be able to achieve all that we want to achieve. Uh, the champion for unity are Filipinos because Filipinos have it in their heart already to love each other. To That's love nicely each other. said. Now it's just you have to bring uh, to that a leadership. okay, kung talagang gusto niyo tumulong. I like the fact that he's not putting himself in the center and in the heart of unification. That unification is its own thing, and that it just represents Filipinos coming together. That's good. Ito yung gagawin natin. Ito, ito, this is your part. You can help us this way. You can help us that way. And we will support you in this way. Yes. Pero sabay-sabay tayo, ito yung gagawin natin. Nagkakasundo ba tayo? Magkasundo tayo, ito yung gagawin natin. Yun, yun ang ibig sabihin sa, sa pag, pag, pag pinag-uusapan yung pagkakaisa. Sometimes it's mistaken when I talk about unity, when I talk about pag pinag-uusapan yung pagkakaisa. Uh, ang interpretation ng iba ay yung eh, sa politika, kailangan lahat magkasama sa isang partido. Uh, hindi yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Ang ibig ko sabihin, magkaisa tayo, natutulungan natin ang Pilipinas. Tutulungan natin yung ating mga, mga kapwa Pilipino. In Philippines, still with presidential candidate, former Senator Bongbong Marcos. Sir, when you become president, what will be your first concrete step towards achieving unity. Siguro narinig nyo na sinasabi ng mga tao, kaya ba ng unity pababaan ng presyo ng gasolina? Kaya ba ng unity magdala ng trabaho? Ano po yung tugon nyo dun Work. sa mga ganun? She said prices gasolina? Gasoline? Uh, jobs, jobs, Oil? jobs. Jobs. Prices, prices. prices. Mm. Um, when, you, when you do a survey 
um, about COVID to Filipinos. Ang mga concern, number one, walang trabaho. Number two, walang, pag, walang pera, walang pakain. Ang pinakamahirap talaga yung nag-lockdown tayo ng husto. I mean, hindi lang naman tayo. Everybody around the world had to do it. No? Uh, but yun ang pinakamahirap. Kaya siguro wala nang lockdown. Kasi... Okay, so he wants to focus on bringing jobs back to the Philippines because of COVID, you know, uh, a lot of people were fired, you know, a lot of businesses went bankrupt and people could not work anymore. So, yeah, yeah it's a good thing that he focuses on this. Kasi yung mga, nung panahon ng mga lockdown, mm. we had the, yep. um, hindi pa natin alam eh. Hindi pa natin alam kung ano ba talaga yung COVID. Tapos wala tayong vaccines. It's hindi tough pa tayo times, ready. tough we times. We didn't know what the, well, how to treat it. We weren't really that good yet. So we just, ang ano lang, option lang yun, lockdown. Uh, siguro, uh, tama na yung huwag na tayong magla-lockdown. May vaccine naman. Uh, marami na tayong natutunan, uh, medically speaking. It's all about how to create jobs. And where you, you look at the areas, what's the fastest? Uh, first of all, the MSMEs, number one. What's that, MSMEs? Ang daming nalugi, ang daming lubog sa utang. Um, so I think the government, together with the private sector, can do something about that. And the government, in terms of fiscal policy, in taxes, uh, na siguro bigyan ng tax holiday, mm. tax amnesty, yung mga hindi nakapagbayad ng lockdown, things like that, para bigyan naman sila ng breathing room, no? maka, 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 ano naman, makabuelo naman sila. And then on the private sector, uh, yung mag, magbigay ng financing. The other uh, uh, area na mat, mab, mabilis ang return is agriculture. Mm -hmm. He talked a lot about agriculture in his um, interview with, uh, was it SMNI? Was that it? Yeah, the, the network? Uh, because we really have to do something about our agriculture anyway. Uh, sobrang ating importation, sobrang yung production kasi nating kulang eh. So kailangan natin tugunan yon. We have to we have to do we have to do and, go back. and making sure that the young generation stays interested in uh, Filipino agriculture because apparently a lot of the young the sons of the 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 people that were taking care of the Filipino agriculture don't want to follow in their parents' footsteps and just want to go into other uh, businesses, you know, and go move to the cities and do other things that are more interesting, you know, for the younger generation. We have to do research, we have to support the farmers. Uh, the whole value chain from, from research and development to production of seedlings, uh, to livestock uh, dispersal, to be giving away a uh, banka na mas malaki. Uh, the other uh, isang experience ko, being, nung nag-governor ako, was tourism. Ang bilis ng tourism, ng returns ng tourism. But we have to do it, uh, we have to do it in another way. Uh, siguro, because yung airport natin dito sa Manila is uh, limited, in its capacity. I think the real capacity is 6.57 million passengers a year. That's not enough. We need to have more. We keep talking about 10 million. But we did not get it. Oh, maybe they want to build a new airport for Manila or make the one that's already there bigger. Expand. So, magtayo tayo ng magagandang airport para hindi na kailangan dumaan sa Maynila. Another one that... Uh, well, that would definitely help with tourism. Actually, something I suggested in a long time is the, like the new deal of FDR during the crash of the, of the stock market mm. in 1929 called the New Deal where talagang gumawa sila ng infrastructure program. Trabaho yan eh. Siguradong trabaho yan eh. And you need the infrastructure anyway. You really need infrastructure. Uh, we, the only siguro yung papalitan natin is that we have to have a... In all of this, in all of this, you have to have a plan. Hindi mo pwede nyo sasabihin, oh sige, dyan, gawin natin yan. Yan, yan, gawin, pa, 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 ano, ano lang. Kailangan may plano tayo. Dahil limited ang resources natin eh. Ang utang natin, 13 trillion na. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, kaya at, uh, kailangan natin bawiin yun, paano natin gagawin. So, we have to be very careful with what little funds we have. Yung new taxes, you meant, because you mentioned about the mm. national debt. 
are you up all for new taxes, imposing new taxes? Depends on what sector and what area. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to be, if the brunt of it is going to be felt by the consumer, I would, I would not be very, par very partial to that. For the simple reason, hirap na hirap na ang mga tao. Wag mo nang dagdagan ng bigat. What does that mean? Hirap na hirap. Hirap na hirap ng tao. Hirap everywhere, na hirap. Uh, everywhere you look, then our educational system, we have to really fix it very, very well. We have to support the, the teachers more. And when I talk about sports, it's not mm -hmm. just the sweldo, mm -hmm. it's not just the benefits, it's also the training. Um, because he, they, well, uh, you know the, the technologies, the new thinking is moving so quickly. You have to you have to be able. To, the teacher should should have the benefit of that of of of, of knowing all of that. Mm -hmm. But may nila sa bata para para yung kabataan natin pag graduate. E eh, talagang magandang pag ano, and then scholarship programs. Eh, and daga natin na scholarship programs. Eh, the agency should have scholar. Okay, so clearly he wants to uh, concentrate on the education on education. Program. The and education the sector. We'll have scholarship programs for agronomists and agriculturists and hydrologists and yung mga kailangan nilang expert. Uh, yung ganun, sa update, they have need engineers maybe for the energy side. We need for the DOJ, we need the good lawyers. We, we just, we, we have to... Uh, we have to improve the bureaucracy. We have to improve the, the quality of the of public service. So what's going to be your program in terms of fighting graft and corruption? How will you promote a culture of accountability in government? And how will you lead by example in this mm. area? Mm. Well, leading by example is very simple. It's, uh, you don't don't uh, uh, don't steal from your own do people. Not, do not tolerate uh, any kind of uh, this kind of ginagawa na 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 ng gobyerno. The, on the, at the lower level in the bureaucracies, if we improve the efficiency... Do not abuse of people's kindness, kindness, you know, Filipinos are very kind. Do not abuse of that. See, ang ideal dyan, lalo na sa lower levels, walang fixer. At the higher level, it goes back to the people you choose. Meron talaga dyan na walang inisip pag pagka uh, na-appoint, iniisip paano tayo kikita rito. Okay, huwag, huwag tayong kukuha ng mga ganun. At kung meron mang nakalusot na may ginawa, eh, parusahan mo. Mm -mm. Sir, um, may mga international think tank like you have Bloomberg, Capital Economics of the UK, Pantheon Macroeconomics, hindi sila kumbinsido na makakabuti para sa ekonomiya ng bansa ang isang, kung kayo po ang magiging pangulo. What will you tell them specifically to change their minds? I will not tell them uh, there's no need. I will do mm -hmm. things. Um, they're not convinced. We will convince them. Tingin ba if they're talking about, you know, it won't be bad for the economy, may obstacles kaya if ever they're going to put in more investments? I think, I think those are more political statements than actual economic analyses, uh, if, you, if you ask me. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, they, I, I suppose there's a... Uh, uh, they, they feel that maybe magkakagulo, etc., that it won't be stabilized. Uh, and they may have a point. But we will, we, we, we know that. So, kung sakali man ay may panalo ko itong eleksyon, eh, babantayan namin yung mga ganun. Hindi naman tayo, mga, hindi naman tayo lang natutulog. Uh, the Presidential Commission on Good Government was created to go after the ill-gotten wealth of the Marcos family and their associates. Should you win as president, what will role will the PCGG play? Strengthen it. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I have to rewind corruption. that. Uh, the Presidential Commission on Good Government was created to go after the ill-gotten wealth of uh -huh. the Marcos family and their associates. Should you win as president, what will role will the PCGG play? Strengthen it. Mm -hmm. Wow! Okay! Okay! Did not expect him to say that. That he's pro the PC, PCCG. Yeah? He's pro that. He said he's gonna strengthen it. Yung ano, corruption, graft and corruption, yan, yan ang trabaho nila. Patibayin mo, big, uh, give okay. them a bigger budget, give them more staff. Para... There you go. Oh, PCGG, not PCCG. PCGG, Presidential Commission on Good Government. Okay, so he wants to stay behind it and strengthen it so that, you know, it, 
this organization can keep an eye on corruption. Very good, because in the Kingmaker documentary, um, you know, they kind of interview someone who worked here, and I believe he was like the head of something, something in this, uh, in this organization. And that was saying that, you know, the Marcoses, uh, like they did take a lot of stuff from the Marcoses that they believe was ill-gotten wealth and says that they still have a lot of stuff that they kept hidden. So I don't know. And that guy fled the Philippines. I guess he was afraid for his, um, for his, for his life, you know. I don't know who to believe. <laughs> Uh, then, nag-file sila ng kaso sa ombudsman. Pero may, may nakakukunin pa po silang uh, more than 170 uh, in litigation pa. Meron pang more than 100 billion pesos in litigation. What what, what can be done with that? Um, I don't know. I, I, I am not familiar with the, <laughs> if you're gonna, the cases. If you, Did you see his reaction? I don't know. <laughs> You, you I'm not familiar with the cases, and that's <laughs> literally the case to case. No, those are. Pero yung sinasabi yung strengthen. Ano po? So how can you expand the functions? How can you strengthen it? Mm -hmm. So that instead of directing themselves against the Marcoses only. Aha. I mean, if I have. Uh, he wants to divert the attention of this organization from the Marcoses. Hmm. Okay, so that's why he said strength and maybe he wants to to be more involved with this organization so that they stop so that the Marcos's family stops taking the heat. <laughs> because obviously, even if the Marcoses stole a lot of money, which I'm not saying they did, I have no, no idea. You know, some people say they did, like the Kingmaker documentary, and some say they didn't. Uh Clearly, it's not just them, if they did, you know. Uh, corruption doesn't revolve around just one family or one person. It's a whole slew of, of, uh, of people in the government, you know, that, that steal and, you know, take advantage of their position. Uh, if I have a corrupt child, he'll be out of his name. But not only us, all of Lahat. Lahat. Kasi, uh, in, in, na, 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 nasa ibang panahon na tayo eh. Uh, hindi na yun ang issue eh. Ang issue is just graft and corruption in government. And they were, they're already there. They committed mo na. Uh, patibayin mo pa. Uh, para talagang meron kang agency na walang ginawa. Kung hindi, nagbabantay na walang gumagawa ng kalawahan. Campaign. Sir, itong issue ng um, ill-gotten wealth and then you have the compensation law na natapos ng bayaran more than 11,000 martial law victims. I know you've been asked about the apology and you mm -hmm. already said that you cannot apologize for something that you didn't do. Pero yung violations, the mistakes, kayo po mismo, what are your thoughts about these ill-gotten wealth amassed and human rights violations committed let the, let under the Let the courts the do their work. Mm -hmm. Let the courts do their work. Kami naman, lagi namin sinasabi, if a court orders us to do something, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. So that I think he might be a little frustrated here. He doesn't really show it, but I feel like these questions have been asked, you know, to him so often. I think he's tired of, uh, of hearing these questions, you know, and because his answer usually is the same thing, so... The courts do the work. But in terms of your policy, if ever you win, um, to... to against the culture of impunity, what will be your policy? What culture of impunity I do? In terms I, maybe of yung hindi po napaparusahan, yung mga in terms of human rights violations. Again, let the courts do their work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, that's the whole thing is that we have to strengthen our institutions. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, nagiging politicized ang institutions natin because, I don't know, because that's the system that we have in place. We have to strengthen our institutions so that it doesn't matter who is in power. I think it's going to answer this question ko for the media. Medyo selfish dahil media po ako. So, paano po kaya ang magiging coverage sa inyo? Kasi ngayon medyo yung iba nahihirapan daw i-approach kayo even for ambush interviews or if ever maging presidente po kayo, paano po ang magiging pakikitungo nyo kaya sa media? 
Put it this way. Ako, palagay ko hindi ako maglalagay ng spokesman. I did not really understand this last question, but I heard media and ambush. Maybe she's asking him about how he would react if the media really chooses to ambush him with some questions, hard questions. I don't understand, but that would be good for us to cover you directly. But spokesman of president, I don't want to explain the president. So you know, that's that's that. You have the old system was they have a press officer who conducts for regular press secretary. Who conducts regular briefings, especially kung may malaking issue na pumotok, magbibriefing yan. Ngayon, if the president decides to make his own statement, that's that. Pupunta sila, then they will face the media, and yun ang pag-usapan yung kung ano man yun, magpapaliwanag o mag-inform o magbrief or whatever. So balik natin yung sistema yun. I I I ang I don't know kung kung bakit sinasabi that uh, yung may mahirap ako yung ambush interview. I'm always out in public. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, ambush interview, okay. Pero, pero siyempre, uh, <laughs> we're doing something else also. Uh, but I don't know why I, that, that they, 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 they say that because as I said, hindi naman ako pwedeng magtago. I'm always out in the public. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so anyway, but, but, but... regular but, press conferences from you. Instead I, of a presidential I, spokesman, ano po? I, I think, well, I think that's, I think it's necessary. You, wag na yung spokesman, press secretary na lang. There's a, there's a difference. There's a difference. Um, I, this is another idea. I mean, hindi pa to buo. Pero yun ang iniisip ko. Kasi bak, iniisip ko pati yung sa mga nakaraan na presidente, wala namang spokesman eh. Frontrunner kayo ngayon sa mga surveys, um, sa putong ito. Uh, meron po ba kayong pinangangambahan? What's your worst fear in these elections? And if ever you win also as president, mm -hmm. ano po talaga yung pinangangambahan nyo kung sakali? Well, yung mga nababalitaan nating manggugulo uh, sa eleksyon. Answer in English, please. Uh, at saka yung dayaan at every level. Uh, alam naman ninyo, nabiktima na ako dyan noong 2016. Kaya, siyempre, <laughs> ma... Uh, maingat, ma kailangan maging maingat dyan kasi nakita ko na kung ano yung mangyayari, maaring mangyari. And how confident are you at this point that you're the president who can unify and move the country forward? Well, I'm not confident that I'm going to be the president yet because I do not allow myself to be confident. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what numbers you... That's because he does not want to be disappointed and because in 2016, he... He lost to any uh, Robredo, you know, for the for the um, seat of vice presidency. Show me, we're not there yet, so we don't stop. We keep going. Uh, put it this way: uh, Should I be elected? Should I be lucky enough to be elected? Then, uh, how confident will I be? I'm confident that I will work with every fiber of my being iota of my being uh, iota what's iota is this fiber of my being yeah <laughs> to make sure that we are working towards unity to unify the country there we go i forgot one thing i wanted to ask you because i think they mentioned taxes how high are taxes in the philippines because here in uh, quebec especially you know canada quebec it's extremely high. It's crazy. Imagine if someone wins, uh, earns, earns, wins, earns about 100K a year. Half of that goes to taxes, goes to the gov government. It's insane. It's insane. So I just want to compare with the, the Philippines. Um, okay, so it was a very interesting interview. I enjoyed it even though I wish he answered more in English. I still was able to understand, you know, the gist of his answers and the gist of her questions when they were speaking in Tagalog because they would insert a few English words here and there and my ears have gotten used to the Tagalog so I kind of, I managed now to understand the gist of things. Um, but what I really enjoyed about it is that you know, she was not afraid to ask the tough questions. And he answered the tough questions. You know, he did not answer them. 
again, we don't, we don't know what really happened. So I wish his answers were more transparent in a way, but they sounded very diplomatic. You know, the way a diplomat should answer them. Not too white, not too black, you know, just be in the middle, you know, and just answer them uh, in a manner that is satisfying, but not too revealing, you know. Unfortunately, that's how politics works. You don't want to show your cards uh, too soon anyways. I am not pro for that. I like, that's why my channel is all about honesty. I like saying things like they are and deal with the consequences later, you know. But uh, still, still, I like the fact that he answered those questions. I love the fact that she asked them, you know, at least I got some clarifications about the questions that I was uh, looking, uh, that, that I was asking, you know, so I'm happy about that. Uh, and like I said, I might react to the interview between his son and him. That could be very interesting. And a lot of you are asking me to react to his father, Ferdinand Marco's speech. There is a, it's called C-SPAN speech, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe, we will see, we will see. As long as you guys, you know, show interest, like the video, share it and stuff, it will make me want to uh, do these reactions, keep doing these reactions, you know? And it's crazy, it's crazy. I mean, you know, I haven't stopped reacting to music or giving you news about music, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in more than that now uh, regarding the Philippines and it's just awesome. And it just makes me feel like once I actually get to the Philippines and go to the Philippines, it, it will make me kind of feel like one of you guys. And the more I know, the better I feel, you know? So I think it's a good thing. So, uh, maraming maraming salamat po, as usual, thank you for joining me, let me know in the comment section below your thoughts, uh, if you need, if you want, you know, it would be nice of you to specify a few things that I might have missed that were said in Tagalog, um, you know, may the most qualified candidate win, as usual. And yeah, uh, it, the, the, it's getting closer and closer. So stay strong, believe in yourself, go vote. It's very important to vote. I, I believe so. I believe it's very important because you do not want your vote that you did not, you know, deliver to be the decision maker. You know, you know what I mean? Imagine, imagine there is like a draw between the two uh, candidates and then your vote could have made a difference, you know? Tip the balance. Yeesh! That would be crazy. So it's very important to vote. Uh, yeah, so take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Subscribe here and please like the video to show your support and appreciation for my work and turn on the notification bell to be poked for future content. Yeah, yeah, yeah.